A group of physicists want to use artificial intelligence to prove that reality doesn't exist. I wish this was a joke, but I'm afraid it's not. It's actually worse. They don't just want to use AI, but also quantum computers. The worst part is that I think they're serious. This one's a little tough to explain. Let's start at the beginning. Or is it the end? Who knows in a reality that doesn't exist? The new paper is a follow-up on an idea that made headlines two years ago as a supposed proof that reality doesn't exist. You'd think that if your theory implies that reality doesn't exist, then maybe, just maybe, there's something wrong with your theory and not with reality. But this is how normal people think, not how physicists think. Physicists think this needs to be taken seriously. I made a video back then explaining this mess, but I I know you don't want to go and watch the whole thing, so here's a brief summary. In the most common interpretation of quantum mechanics, the outcome of a measurement is not determined. The theory merely makes probabilistic predictions and it's only once you make a measurement that the outcome actually has a specific value. Unfortunately, quantum mechanics doesn't tell you exactly what a measurement is. That's part of what's called the measurement problem and it's the origin of the idea that reality doesn't exist. The a reasonable take on the measurement problem is that there is some good definition for what a measurement is. We just don't know it yet. A measurement is the interaction with a device called the detector. And even though we can't formally write down exactly what a detector is, we know what they do. They make measurements. That's the reasonable take. But the vast majority of physicists do not agree on this. They believe that a measurement is not a physical process. This causes the following problem first pointed out by Eugene Wigner, known as Wigner's friend. Imagine you're Eugene Wigner, though he's been dead for 30 years, so maybe don't. Imagine you're the reincarnation of Eugene Wigner. Your friend is in a lab working with a quantum particle that could appear either left or right on the screen. Before you measure the particle, it is, as we say, in a superposition of left and right. But once your friend measures the particle, she'll find it either left or right, not both. It's like Schrodinger's cat, but with less fur and more lab coats. Let's say she finds it left. You knock at the door and ask what she measured, and she says, well, it was left. So far, so obvious. But if you think the measurement is not a physical process, then you'd say the measurement only happens once she tells you the outcome. And before that, your friend herself was in a superposition, one in which she measured the particle left and right at the same time. And it's only once she tells you the result that the superposition of her disappears. Physicists have discussed this story of Wigner's friend for like half a century. Then in 2016, they made it more complicated by saying you could use two people in two laboratories with two friends and two particles that are entangled. That's what they call progress in physics nowadays, making insane ideas even more insane. Then in 2018, Chaslav Bruckner proved that if these two people in the laboratories could be in superpositions, which of course they cannot, then all four people can't agree on the outcome of all experiments. And this is where the headlines come from, that reality doesn't exist. Because if you buy that people can be in superpositions, then you have to conclude that there is no external world that's independent of us. It will depend on where we are and who we talk to. In 2019, then, a group from Edinburgh made an experimental test that tested the predictions for this extended weakness friend scenario, except that they replaced the friends with photons. Now, you might argue that photons aren't people, and you'd be right. And that finally brings me to the new paper. The authors argue that they can circumvent this photon problem by taking an artificial intelligence that plays the role of the friends in the two laboratories. They say it has to be sufficiently intelligent to plausibly make an observation, so they assume human-level artificial intelligence. Then they say we will put this AI on a quantum computer. And since it's a quantum computer, so the idea, the observer can indeed 
indeed exist in a superposition. There are two minor problems with the idea. One is that we don't have human-level artificial intelligence. And the other one is that we don't have quantum computers remotely large enough to run any AI on them. But the much bigger problem is it doesn't make any sense. First, you don't need intelligence to make a measurement. You just need a detector. Though, what do I know? If you think your friends are photons, then maybe you also think fluorescent screens are intelligent. And second, if whatever it is that you use to make the measurement doesn't collapse the superposition, then it wasn't a measurement. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Just in case you're still imagining your weakness reincarnation and talking to photons had you missing the more subtle nuances, I think this is nonsense. So why am I telling you this? It's because it highlights a very important point. It's that the larger the quantum systems that we can create, the better we can test which type of configuration does and doesn't destroy superpositions. This means that there'll be, there have to be certain configurations that you can put on a quantum computer, which you can't put into a superposition any more than dead and alive cats. And if we figure out just which ones those are, we'll have solved the measurement problem. Oh dear, can you have an existential crisis if reality doesn't exist? Let me know in the comments. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn, and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.